Hi! So today I want to give you a quick overview over what are dictionaries and why would you want to use them. So first of all, I am starting out with basically just an empty scene that just closes the game again when I open it, because there won't be any visual elements to this. What I'm doing is I'll just be giving some print statements down here if we need any feedback on what's happening. So if I just play this, it opens up and closes again, just like that. Now, what is a dictionary? Most of you are probably going to be aware of how a list or an array works in Godot. So if we have an array, it's defined using square brackets. And essentially we just put a bunch of things in there. We can put any kinds of objects in there really. And these are going to be accessible via the spot they are in. So this is accessible by zero, this is accessible by one, this is accessible by two. We have these numbers, so if we type print array position one, it should give us hello. And so it does. So that is very simple, and we can see why it would be pretty fast, because we are just accessing a predefined position, so the computer already knows where this value is. It can access it basically instantly without having to search for it as long as we have this number. Dictionaries are a bit more complex here. So if we say var dict equals curly brackets. Now dictionaries are defined using curly brackets, which is similar enough to the square brackets of an array, just to tell them apart. The difference here is that our key isn't a number that's predefined, 0, 1, 2, as in a list, but we specify a key. So we can make our key, key 1, and give it the value 12, the second key, give it the value hello, and let's see, numbers are hashable too, so let's go with that, give it the value factor 2, 0, 1. So now if we print dictionary and put a 3 in there, it prints our vector 2 with 0, 1. So technically if we just put numbers in here, 0, 1, 2, this here is identical to how the list functions. We have these predefined numbers and can access it with this. However, why does it still work fine when we put something like a string or some other hashable object in here? The key in that lies, for people who don't yet know what hashable actually means, in a hash function. What a hash function essentially does is it takes the information that this string contains, so whatever you would put into a variable with that string, and calculates a number based on that, which can be used to identify where this value is stored efficiently. So essentially the reason we care about this is because without a hash function to figure out where this thing actually here is, we would have to search through the entire dictionary to find the correct value. Let's say this dictionary was really really long, it had like hundreds of values in there, then to find the 99th value we would have to iterate through the entire thing to figure out where the corresponding key is since we don't have a specific number. But the hash function simplifies all of that by just calculating where the number would be using a hash table to get there almost immediately. That makes dictionaries really fast even though we use complicated things like strings to access our values. Now, why do we actually care? Why are we actually gonna wanna use something like this? The reason is simple we can represent much more interesting data structures using a dictionary while still having them human readable. If we have something like this in the array, this 12 and this hello and this vector 0, 1 could essentially mean anything. There's really no way for a user to know without checking the documentation what these values are representing. There's some number, there's some string, but these could all be important pieces of information that are used, for example, to store the location of a character when we are leaving a scene and want to be able to reload it later. 
So while for a computer, it might be fine to just use lists and keep them in order and not really care about what it is. Oftentimes it's a lot more convenient for actually programming and for maintenance and stuff like that to be able to say our character's height is 12, our character's name is hello, and our character's position is vector 2, 0, 1. So like this, we would have information that is actually readable. We can actually tell what these things are. And we can efficiently access them by just using this string here and waiting for it, the program to hash it automatically and get us the correct value. That makes dictionaries really great for saving data later on. And let's see if we just print the entire dict. There, it's quite easily human readable. Height is 12, name is hello, position is that. We can easily print it out and see what is inside of a dictionary. And we can easily access it in code. Like if we want to say print dictionary of name, then we already are going to know, yeah, this is going to output us the name. So that's fine. Now, one issue that is still going to happen if we access it like this is we don't know what's going to happen if this value doesn't actually exist. So let's say we take the key name2. This isn't a thing up here, so let's take a look. And there we go, it freezes invalid get index name2 on base dictionary. This doesn't exist, and it doesn't know what to do with that. Now, in some cases, you might want values that don't always exist. So if you haven't included it yet, you don't necessarily want to add it to the dictionary. In that case, there's a neat thing we can use, which is the function dict.get. Now here it already tells us we can put a key in there and set a default. So we can say get name2. And if that doesn't exist, we use the default Steven. So now if we print that, since name2 doesn't exist, it's going to just give us Steven and not complain at all. This works fine, and this can be used to do things like this. Let's say we want to count something inside of our dictionary, then we can say dict at position or string counter equals dict.get counter comma zero plus one. So if this already exists, if counter is already up in here, then it's fine. It's just going to use whatever value is currently in there and increase it by one. If that isn't a thing yet, it's just going to create it because it will just start out with zero, add one. There we go. We have one now. So we can just say for i in range of 10, we do this. And then afterwards we can print dict at position counter. Let's run that. And it gives us 10 because that's how often it counted up. Simple enough. If we were to just try accessing dict at position counter, of course that's not going to work because, let's see, similar to before, invalid get index counter doesn't exist. As for the actual value here in the back, you can put anything you want in here, even another dictionary. Say you want um, an inventory. You can technically put an entire inventory in here and say this contains other stuff. It doesn't really matter, but I think this about gives you a brief overview of the most important features for a dictionary. This will be all for today. Bye.